I feel that one particular factor that presents an opportunity for youth in nation building is political leadership. Yeah. So this is where youth will like have the opportunity to vote and be voted for and go into political um, positions. We always talk about not too not too young to run, not too young yeah. for this. But oftentimes it's like there's a lot of experience that is needed. There's a lot of know-how that certain people needed. might not have. Yes. But do you think it's just an excuse to just boycott the youth and just keep talking on to the power? What Most of the people that are online today that are just online um, commenters, they just comment about this, they want, want change, they want this, they want that. When it's time to go and vote? Oh. Do not you sit in their them. houses. Exactly. If you want change, actually, I think the very first thing that you should do is go get your PVC. Mm. And when it's time for election, perform your civic duties. Guys, and come out. go get your PVC. Yeah. Another thing we can do is get involved, like you said it earlier in the conversation, get involved in politics. Like the turn up in the last general election, election the yes. way the youth came out to vote is really good. And we just need to keep doing that. Exactly. And, and keep the hope up. So are you a youth, Paul? I'm a youth. Okay. <laughs> a youth at heart. Okay. Hi guys, welcome to Timeline. Children are truly the leaders of tomorrow. Well, that's what we're told while growing up. Today, children are still waiting for a day where tomorrow will come and they become the leaders that they say that they are. Today, we'll be talking about the roles of youths in nation building. My name is Paul, and with me here are Joe and Eze. And also, we have Groove Kifasi. Groove Kifasi. <laughs> The name of the groove. Yes, sir. <laughs> welcome. Thank you Passing. so much. I'm You're happy welcome. to be here, guys. Yeah. Well, a youth is considered to be a person that is transitioning between a child and becoming an adult. Well, meaning that the story of a youth is becoming an adult. But however, the age bracket of this particular transition has, is very different from place to place and from time to time, depending on the social economic factors in whatever region that there is. Well, the United Nations says that youths are between the age of 15 to 24, while the African Youth Charter say that youths are between the age of 15 to, to 35. And interestingly, my shock you as well, here in Nigeria, we go with that, that saying that youths are between the age of 15 to 29, and the WHO says that youths are between the age of 10 to 24. However, the UN World Youth reports that we have about 1.2 billion of youths across the globe, mm. totaling to about 16% of the world population. Mm -hmm. Interesting facts out there. Well, some people actually will fall for this whole number thing yes. because there is a word, age is just a number. But we have youths or people or individuals that they feel they are youths because of <laughs> how they dress or how they look. <laughs> like, they are, do you see a 40 year old woman and she's looking so young, like, and you just ask her, are you a youth? She'll be like, yes. Some I'm people will be like, I'm a youth at heart. Like the way they think <laughs> exactly. and all that and the way they communicate. They just feel that for the fact that they can um, flow in slangs, you know, all these street yeah. slangs language. Mm. That's what makes them a youth. But as for me, I'm still a youth. I see that kingdom come. Ah, <laughs> kingdom come <okay. laughs> you see, African have, have, have has this thing of even if they are old, they still want to remain a youth. Yeah. Do you understand? Like, yeah. they are usually, there's this saying of you know, when someone is 16, I'm like, no, I'm not 60. I'm just, I'm my sweet 16. Sweet 16. <laughs> <laughs> like, you are 60 already. <laughs> so are you a youth, Paul? Yeah, I'm a youth. Ah, what about you, Kifasi? When you look at the criteria <laughs> that you gave, I think there's one that you said from 15 to 24. Yes. Mm. Are you sure you're a youth still? <clears throat> I'm a youth. Okay. <laughs> a youth at heart, I think Nigeria, I'm a Nigerian youth. Okay, sure. Bet. Exactly. Got you. I'm also an African youth. Mm -hmm. I'm not 35 yet. Yes, yes, yes. Exactly. Sure. All right. So, um, Kifasi, I asked you a question. Uh -huh. Are you a youth or yes, you're just no, young I'm, at heart? I mean, you know, I'm, I'm actually really young. Like, people always look at me. I think I'm older than my age. But, guys, come on. Tell me. Don't I look like I'm 19? <laughs> I'm 19. Maybe 85. How bad? <laughs> I'm 19. All right. So, let's get straight um, to something very, very important. Okay. So, let's Let's go to the opportunities that present um, themselves to youth in based on nation building. Mm -hmm. So first of all, for me, I feel 
that one particular factor that presents an opportunity for youth in nation building is political leadership. Yeah. So this is where youths will like have the opportunity to vote and be voted for and go into political um, positions. You see youths like back then in 19, whatever, you see people that went into political um, positions and they were actually doing well. Wow. Like they started from a very young age and even though some of them are still in power, but anyways, <laughs> <laughs> they went into a very young age and they started controlling things at a very young age. So I feel political leadership is one major opportunity that presents them to youths that present to youths for nation building. But do you think that young people, like young people like ourselves, excluding poor, but like, <laughs> yeah, do you think that we have the necessary like experience that, that that is needed for those kind of positions, like political positions? What do you think? Because experience is experience is needed, right? In like all this, because we always talk about not too not too young to run, not too young yeah. for this. But oftentimes it's like there's a lot of experience that is needed. There's a lot of know how that. Right, certain people dead. might not have. Yes. But do you think it's just an excuse to just boycott the youth and just keep talking on to the power? What do you what are your thoughts? Personally, I feel like that's not an excuse, but mm. whatever opportunities that youth have in front of them, they should be able to harness it well mm -hmm. and try to utilize it well. That's okay. how I see things. However, another thing again that's that that youth are always very much um open to is access to education yes. and also skill development. And also we also have technology innovation. Mm. Today now, right, if there's any gadgets that comes to the world, mm. the first people or the, those that will abuse it, those mm. that will use it, mm. those that will misuse it, are in this proper but, that, but that's like an added advantage, isn't it? Obviously, mm -hmm. that like, yeah, exactly because obviously now you have um you have this knowledge that these people don't have already of as well. Mm, yeah. So all of these things are things that we can see under this. And that thing again is leadership and civil engagement. Mm. Today now we see people year in year and there, you know, going for Afrimon. moon. That's the Africa um, model United Nations. Also we see um, there's a model United Nations as well. Young people is all of these things are open to just young people so that they are able to explore, show themselves, look for their, in their own little way, right? Try to promote peace and unity across the globe. So what about you, Kevasi? What mm -hmm. do you think are those opportunities that present to youth in nation building? I think one of the key things, you know, the strength of the youth is their, their, their strength. Like uh, rather the advantage of every youth is yeah. their strength. Mm -hmm. You can, somebody like you and I, mm. not poor, we have the energy, we can work morning to night, on and on and on. So I feel like in nation building, if we, if they can take advantage of the manpower, let me give an example, pardon me. So there was a popular uh, Nigerian celebrity that had a wedding <clears throat> and this wedding wasn't during the weekend. It was during the weekday. working a weekday. Mm. Yeah. And you see the amount of people that turned up for that, for that wedding. And you just ask yourself, like, where's all this manpower going into? This is manpower that could be very lucrative in opening a lot of economic opportunities, social opportunities, even political opportunities in the countries. Mm -hmm. So areas like industry, areas like technology, construction, that needs a lot of energy and manpower. Mm -hmm. I feel like it will be essential in nation building because the backbone of every nation is the economic stability that it has. Mm -hmm. You know, you look at countries like the United States, yeah. they are the world power because of the economic power that they possess. So I think if we invest and we focus on the manpower of Nigerian youth, people like you and I, mm. not Paul. I think, be, I think, <laughs> I think we should just try to include Paul this time around so that he doesn't like go out and cry know, because he's still a youth. Yeah. I should feel among, right? <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. We're well, talking about... Um, Economic development, right? Um, UNDP says that um, supporting youth entrepreneurship is essential to is, is essential to achieve a sustainable to achieve sustainable development goals. Yeah. If you should see around now at NGOs, all of um, places that has to do with development of yeah. nations, mm -hmm. those that you see in such places, right, are youths. Usually, wherever you go, mm -hmm. whatever NGO it is, either in education, in nutrition. Um, climate change that are usually youths that are in this place that are they're the, the ones exactly they're the ones that are usually driving for a change in all of these sectors. Okay, so let's move down to the significant role that youth play in the progress of both developed and developing countries. So, what mm -hmm. are those roles that um, youth can actually play for developing and developed countries? Okay, so one of the issues that you find that is very uh, significant and be ubiquitous amongst developing countries mm. is a lack of 
mili- lack of military defense. So you see a lot of instability, maybe uh, political instability, social instability, ethnic clashes. And these things happen because of the supposed insecurity that exists within the community. So obviously, even in the military, if they are recruiting people, every country has like a certain age limit that they have because they yeah. don't want uh, people that are over age, like Paul, to join the military mm-hmm. and be part of what they're doing. Mm-hmm. So I feel like in a sense, if you the co- a country, especially a developing one, maybe one that's experiencing those kind of ethno ethno tribal clashes, if they can invest in deploying a lot of youth within the security forces, I think it will help a lot. It will stabilize the political and all those other clashes that they have within the community environment. Okay, yeah, that's very, very good contribution there. And also for in the aspect of vocational training mm-hmm. and skills, that's like very, very important for, for youth to venture into. Because mm-hmm. this time around, I keep saying it that you shouldn't just sit down and wait for white collars jo- white collar yeah, job. For- they should just go ahead and learn different skills like mm. not even just one only mm. because for me one is not enough mm. at least you should be jack of all trade not really all of it but at least more than one mm. and you should be grounded in it is is not really enough for you to just know it mm. you should also be grounded in the whole information and i think from there you can contribute you can also be a source of employment because yeah. by the time mm. you're you're done learning a particular skill, yeah, you, you have to employ people. Exactly, you est- you build an establishment and then you start employing people. And of course, it will increase the the economic sector yeah, of both definitely. the le- local and national level. Permit me to digress a bit. You know, mm. one of the experiences when you finish from school, how many people did you know that study something? Let's let's use microbiology yeah. for example. Mm. And they are into catering business. Yeah. And yeah. this one is a tailor. I yeah. think that's what you mentioned is actually really essential. Yeah. Yes. And to be honest, especially here in Nigeria, I think it has become sort of the norm. Everybody is just building themselves to be entrepreneurs on yeah. the back of their mind. Exactly. They already have a skill that they, they want to venture they want to into. Venture into yeah. Well, this particular, uh, this vocational education is one of the things that UNESCO is currently clamoring for. They mm-hmm. want it to be aired. And as well, Nigeria at the moment uh, is, uh, is trying to absorb that particular one as yeah. well, vocational education. Yeah, they want to even include it in the curriculum. Exactly, so that people education. are, even while in school, right, you have something else that you're doing outside school. So now let's talk about some examples of youths that made impact okay. at their little age. We know of uh, Microsoft with Bill Gates. Bill Gates uh, did Microsoft while he was in his 20s. Mm-hmm. We know of um, uh, Mark Zuckerberg who did Facebook. Yeah. We are connecting here and there on mm-hmm. social media. Larry was, Page for Google. We have a lot of them. We have Steve Jobs as well mm-hmm. that did that for um, for Apple as well. And mm-hmm. a number of them get, do you know I don't know what ones that you want to say. Sí. Cristiano Ronaldo. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. So, yes. But he he did now. He actually did do something as a youth, you know, becoming the greatest football player of all time. No, I, I well, you know what? Let's don't argue <laughs> because my own is Messi, like Lionel Messi. Know, he has bagged, like, you know what? Let's don't go. Let, let's not just, let's let's not just, go, let's not just <laughs> go there. It's better we don't actually yeah, go there. Yeah, yeah. Because all right. So, let's, let's just come back. So, you asked a very, very important question based yes. on the examples of people that have made ways. Okay. So, let's come back to Nigeria, right? Yes. Even though it's not like we're still talking about the world wide mm-hmm. um aspect so for nigeria let's let's remember um um general go on Wonderful. that established the nyc currently yeah, that exactly. is still running yes. till today like kudos to you kudos he's to the you, major Baba. reason why people are still moving from one place to the another, to another. Some, and, and then in process find greener pastures exactly i know yeah. a lot of people that have said ah, they got married because of nyc yes. they got their job because of nyc you know they discovered a lot of places because of nyc i'm not mm. promoting nyc but anyway it's it's worth to be promoted actually <laughs> so this person who is in person of general um go on mm. yakubu go on um actually started leading mm-hmm. nigeria at a very young age yes, sir. yeah at the age of i think that was 38 in, yeah, 31 was 31, 31 yes. sorry yes at the age of 31 so and we also have uh, our babao mm. general sorry yeah. my bad <laughs> so he also um led nigeria at a very young age as well even though then like and now our classification of age mm-hmm. or youth is not uh, <laughs> is that, now younger i guess that's what yeah. they were like talking 30 about. something yeah uh, compared to now that is from 15 to 24 yeah, they were like uh, paul's age they're about yeah. Yeah, like... <laughs> 
<laughs> and they were making exploits, mm. right? So we also have countries like um, Emmanuel Macron, mm-hmm. that's the pre- yeah. current president of, of France. France. Mm. Yeah, he became the president of France at the age of 39, Sha. Yeah. But according to history, he's the youngest president in France. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and we also, we've also had different presidents from different countries. Well, that's in the po- political sector, right? Yeah. Also, yeah, yeah, in Nigeria, so we also had great people who had built things, technology, mm-hmm. because we were talking, Even we talking in, about in things like arts and literature exactly. as well. Yeah. Like Chimamanda. Chimamanda, mm, exactly. Yeah. We have um, Olubenga, Agbola, who founded Flutter Wave, yeah. while he was still under 30. Wow. We have Andile. We have um, Groove Chifasi. <laughs> what have you established? Just give me small time. I'll go so many. <laughs> It's, it's still in his strengths, is remember. Okay, okay. We, have, we also have um Iniola who did um Andile. Also, we have um we have one other person. We have She Leads Africa. Mm. This, this is two people coming together to do yeah. some one thing that is great. This Yasmin Belo or Sage, mm-hmm. and also um Afua or Say. Let me even give a shout out to my guy, Ademola Lukman, mm. Nigerian yeah. football player that was nominated for the Ballon d'Or. So that's, that's a that's, big that's thing. Even, that's a big even, thing. You know, funny even enough, I'm proud. Well. Yeah, ex- you know, the funny thing is like, sorry, I'm diverting a no bit problems. to sports, but mm. you know, when we talk about football, we talk about the legends that we have, people like exactly. JJ Okocha, people yeah, like Kano, Kano Wako. Wako. They, yeah. never, they never did that. They were never like at this level that yeah. Ademola Lukman and yeah. Victor Simen mm. actually reached in getting Ballon d'Or nominations. So Simen finished eighth mm. and Ademola Lukman is in the top 20 list for the next coming so that's really great actually. well I, I had a dinner with them last night and it's also so, oh, just wow. so yeah. that's interesting you're yeah, not saying Ivy exactly <laughs> yeah, I'm <laughs> like why but regardless yeah. we're going to break now once we come back we we'll continue talking about all of these great things that youths have done around the globe to build that nation Hey everyone, let's face it, our world today experiences numerous challenges. And guess what? Our community isn't off the hook either. Most of the world issues are either not talked about enough or never talked about at all. But here on Timeline, we've got you covered. We dive deep into issues that affect us every day, leaving behind footprints of wisdom, knowledge, and solutions. Think of it like a roadmap that keeps you on the track for success. So buckle up. Because in this new season of Timeline, we're taking another trip through the past, the present, and navigate into a more promising future. Again, we're talking solutions, people. And let's make one thing clear. This is not your average blah, blah, blah combo. This is real talk with a side of inspiration and a sprinkle of wow. I never thought about it like that. I'm your host on this impactful ride. Together, we'll tackle the tough stuff, laugh a little, and find ourselves on the path positive change. So what are you waiting for? This is two of Timeline. We'll be loaded. Let's get started. Hop in. And let's drive straight into the hearts of issues shaping our world. Let's go. Oh, one more thing. Hit that subscribe button and let's take this ride together. Every day, Amazing stories of hope and tenacity unfold across the globe. On Huge Hour, we dive into these inspiring tales and discuss the vital work being done in the humanitarian and development space. Humanity has never faced a shortage of challenges, yet we rise stronger through teamwork and determination. Though these remedies are often underreported, on Huge Hour, we advocate sustainable solutions. We bring you the latest and most impactful news on how lives are being changed. We engage with young change makers and experts who provide valuable insights into relief efforts and the challenges faced by local communities through a global perspective. Join us every Wednesday by 8 a.m. on Hude Network's YouTube channel as we embark on this journey of positive change.
Yeah, welcome back to the timeline. And see, we we're talking about the roles of youth in nation building. And I think one of the ways that youth have helped in building that nation is putting their country's name on everybody's lips. Yes, sir. A, a, a major one is actually in sports. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And let's start with Toby Amosan, who at a point in time was the record, um, had the world record, uh, world record for mm-hmm. 100 meters all those. Mm-hmm. Like, everywhere you go, everybody you just see, you just see green and Toby, white. Everywhere. And, 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 and she was... It's a woman. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not no, being. Right. I'm not being like that. So what? I thought we. It's not gender equality. Hey, no, it's then. okay now. We are not. We are yeah, not but she's a, she's a woman. She's a woman. Yeah, she's, she's a woman. Actually, yeah. 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 thank women you. Women making us proud. Thank exactly. you. Thank you so much. And I think another one again is actually in our entertainment uh, world because yeah. all of those guys are actually doing wonderful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well. A lot of them are doing well. Everybody listening to Afro beats. Mm. You are hearing this. There is this back rooms uh, in one place. Mm. They are playing Afro beats. This footballer is listening to uh, Sancho. Just in, in, in the last um, uh, Ashake's concert in the UK, mm. he went to Ashake's concert. Like he wanted to see Ashake. All those kind of things. Also, mm. these people are putting Nigeria on the world. Yeah, s- kudos to them. Actually. Yeah, 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 yeah. Speaking on entertainment, we have likes of Vicky James. Like yes. shout out to you, Vicky James. Like she has actually topped the most in the fashion industry, yeah. you know, and she has even entered Forbes. Like. Shout out to you. And yeah, also, we have Hilda Bassi. She when when she finishes she's shouting out her women, then we'll shout <laughs> out our guys. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we also have Hilda Bassi. Yes. You know, she won. We all know yeah, yeah, that yeah. she won the Guinness World Record. And she not does, she, she not does win, actually. Yeah. Because after she won the, the record, right? Yeah. Everybody yeah, was looking now for. started this Guinness World Record. Yeah, this and that. Like, Speaking of Guinness World Records, can we uh, shout out uh, my guy <laughs> Tunde Onokoya? Yeah. Exactly. Uh, the founder of Chess, Chess and Slums, Slums Africa. Yeah. That's a wonderful initiative. You know, yeah. it's not just about doing something. Mm. Yeah. It's the impact that what you're doing leaves. And of exactly. course. And, and, and that, Tunde has been doing really great because mm. what he does is to bring children from the slum, mm-hmm. take them to school, teach them how to play. In the process, as well, teach them how to play chess yeah. Yeah. and also try to ensure that they are doing great. So every, guys, there's, every, this particular, there's this particular young girl, mm-hmm. actually, yes. at the age of 17, mm-hmm. all the way from um, Pakistan. Yes, okay. her name is Malala Yousuzai. Yuf, yes. <laughs> yes. 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 So Malala actually won the Nobel Peace Prize mm-hmm. and she she became a an advocate for yeah. the girl child, like mm-hmm. for education and all. Exactly. And to the girl like child. shout out to her because yeah. at the age of 17 yeah. she won the Nobel Peace Prize Paul yes. what have you won <laughs> I've won a lot actually I was a well, professor you can in keep my it school you ever went to your school yeah. okay anyways that's a very good one you can you can actually be a good yes, leader I've always, I've always been leading everywhere I am actually anyways even, so in, well even when I was in NYC camp as well I was a leader hey, <laughs> Um, also, also, we have um, um, Gotera Gothenburg mm. um, from Sweden, who is an advocate for climate change. And I think that's one great thing again. And she's also young as well. Everybody's just doing great here yeah. and there, here and there. I think we should mention more names. It's like, it's just me, we should mention more names. Mm. I'm mm. not tired of mentioning Adimola Lukman, my guy. Oh. Yeah, obvious. My that's guy, true. Victor we, 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 I agree we talk about sports very yeah. well. Yeah. At the moment now, there are people that identify to do, that want to come to Nigeria because of mm. people like Victor Osime. Yeah. When Osime was in Napoli, for example, yeah. Yeah. like people would wear his jersey. Yeah, even well, as he moved to Galatasaray right ex- now in Turkey, the Turkish exactly. fans have embraced him. Uh, nobody should send me. Oh. Like everybody, <laughs> everybody is like embracing. They want to identify one way or the other with mm. Nigerians. Sometimes they try to speak the language sometimes mm-hmm. sing the music just mm. just a way to connect to so yeah I, I think you're very very correct like yeah. apart from nigeria let's come to um we're not we're not trying to divert all, but this is me saying even in my club like my football mm. club we are yeah. all youth there apart from you guys club sure. <laughs> like my own club now liverpool is filled with youth like mosella oh you know and all that oh why are you my, tired oh my you're a liverpool what fan you? yes and we're sitting you on the same ne- table <laughs> <laughs> so now let's try to wrap things up really quick and then let's talk about how what are you, what what are the things that you recommend to you to take part in, in in to ensure that they are they are be really building that nation, not that they're just doing one thing or the other. I think before before we won't go to this, sorry. Let, let me also uh um just try to give a shout out to Asha Khan as well, who's trying to en- en- engage his community yeah. one way or the other. He's doing his, his little way. <laughs> he's doing his, his little way, but then it's 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 making sure that people's life are touched and changing people's story. Yeah. So now to the recommendations that you want to give to youth based on nation building, what are those things you feel that they should do? Okay, let's start with the things that they shouldn't do. 
Okay. One, one of the things that you shouldn't do as a youth, <clears throat> even simple things like just obeying the traffic law, mm. simple yeah. things like don't throw dirt on your environment. These things go a long way to helping yeah. the community. Mm. Another thing is you see this Id- idolization of quick money, get money quick, and you mm. begin to get into stuff like internet frauds. Yes. Those things are terrible. Mm. Whether you like it or not, whether the people are living in a different country or not, you're destroying the lives and destinies of other people. Yes. It's completely wrong. There's no, we shouldn't have a middle ground with it. We shouldn't uh, romanticize which is horrible and we should call it out for what it is so i think we should even start from what we shouldn't do mm. yeah. exactly. okay so Actually, what we yeah. should let's start from there then. yeah i i think i really really support what you just said now mm. what we shouldn't do okay let's move to what we should do right mm. for my own sake i for my own opinion i feel um we should be more patriotic this Wonderful. aspect of you saying that we should we shouldn't loiter the environment mm. even in the aspect of queuing queuing culture is oh, very yes. very I've ever important. tried to buy for recently that is why I'm, I'm calling you in culture <laughs> yeah, now because <laughs> like you go you, you see people you see even it's even sometimes it's even we that used to do ourselves yes. you see people will say ah and because I know you yeah come from come yeah, from yeah, yeah. but no like mm. you came late so join the queue, the queue. you understand so queuing culture we should adopt that queuing culture yes. and make sure that everything will be going smoothly yes it might actually waste your time but yeah. anyway you came late so you have to join the queue oh, and yeah, secondly the aspect of patriotism Let's try to be defending our nation. Yeah. Don't join other people and be saying, eh, that is how we are. That is how bad we are. <laughs> but and all that. At the moment now, right? Nigerians <laughs> are so good at supporting the, the nation on internet. Forget that we might bash ourselves. That we, eh, right? uh, we used to bash in, ourselves. In yeah. between, right? But yeah, yeah, when yeah. it comes to defending ourselves, I remember there was this time that with one random South African man ah! it was like, oh, <laughs> when I'm bored, I'll just order boats in Nigeria okay. and then I'll cancel the Nigeria ride. showed them their <laughs> pay. <laughs> The the backfire <laughs> was just so much. It was like, massive. It was, it was like Nigerians, times Nigerians, we can we we can attack ourselves, but yeah. we don't let other and people, people attack, attack us. Attack us. <laughs> but well, I think actually, like it's, it's it's normal actually because yeah. usually we are siblings or siblings yeah. or friends, right? Mm-hmm. Would like bash themselves. But if mm. anyone, An outsider. Should, yeah. if anyone from outside like, tries to like mm. bash you, like yeah, everybody is on that person. Yeah, and, and that's another thing we can do is get involved. Like you said it earlier in the conversation, get involved in politics. Like the turn up in the last. General election, election, the way the youth came out to vote is really good. And we just need to keep doing that and and keep the hope up. Yeah. Yeah. And it's not even only just voting. You can also come out for political positions, like Mm -hmm. aspire for positions. Mm -hmm. And of course, youth, if they see that you are capable, we'll vote you in Mm. and we'll make sure that you go in there. But when you get in there, please don't disappoint (laughs) us. But again, another thing again I noticed as let's let's talk a little bit about um the election. In the last election, and there were a lot of online voters. Mm. A yeah. lot of them. For example, now in my in my own police unit, I could literally count the number of young guys I saw. Can like you on my hand. Like mm. I could just say, okay, just this guy, just this guy, this guy, this guy. Most of the people that are online today are just online um commenters. They just comment about oh, this. Good. They yeah. want change, they want this, they want that. When it's time to go and vote, oh. do not you sit in their them. houses. Exactly. If you want change, actually, I think the very first thing that you should do is go get your PVC. Mm. And when it's time for election, perform your civic duty. Guys, yeah. and come out. Go get your PVC, okay? <laughs> <laughs> go get your PVC. <laughs> and again, it's actually a one way again to be a patriot. Actually, it's yeah. very important for us to be a patriot. Yeah. Um, a great man once said that it's not just about what my country can do for me, mm. but what can I, I do for my, for my country? Mm. Yeah. Exactly. Mm. It's very no wonder you are not you are not a youth. You are an adult. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you say I'm an adult, I identify as a youth. Since you guys, that some people identify as youth. Youth in the hearts. <laughs> I'm not just a youth by heart. I'm a youth. Mm. Well, congratulations. I qualify to be an African youth. Kifasi. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Word up, word yeah, up. So what is that word particular up. thing that word up. you are trying to do yeah. for your country and the nation at large? Like, I can't wait for them to pronounce Kifasi as the next president of... Hey, <laughs> see prophecy. <laughs> see prophecy. Prophetic. Please come and... Uh, you know, let us pray. Let us pray for Kifasi. <laughs> Receive the power of uh, leadership. Okay, for, for me, I think uh, one of the ways I believe I'm contributing to society is mm. I work in many religious groups, right? Mm. And I try to serve. I feel like, you know, sometimes we can be a bit too critical of religious groups and say, you yeah. are the reason that this, you are the reason. But, but sometimes we often forget how these religious groups play a role in mm. actually giving people opportunity. Yes. Now I want to ask you a question. Let me put you on the spot just a bit, right? Mm, okay. Think of anybody you know that knows how to play the musical instrument, be it guitar, drums, sticks, even vocalists, right? Mm. There's a 95% chance that person learns that instrument for sure. free From in a religious church. institution. Oh, yeah. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. So these are the little ways that we can actually make people, even the Afro 
R&B artists that were celebrating yeah. today. Mm. Take a bunch of them. Yeah, and most of them, them came out of them. Sure. Yeah, yeah, you see yeah, that yes. they, they go a lot of this. The Tans father is a pastor. Lika's father is a pastor. Even our uh, flavor, the bands, mama, mama. The band started <laughs> from, from, from the church. Mm-hmm. Flavor started from the church. So, yeah. David started from the church playing drums. And Paul too started so, from the church. <laughs> <laughs> so I feel like um, participating in all these religious organizations, yeah. a lot of charity work that I'm doing. And then also I'm a musical artist. Mm. Uh, the kind of music I make, I like to make music that inspires people. There's no... Um, vulgar words or bad language what about the one that about... will make me fall in love <laughs> oh, actually lo- love actually will make the world a better place right. <laughs> exactly. so what what are you as a person doing what are you doing okay well as a fashion designer that I am I, I don't know I'm always I'm always hey. that crafts I'm like hey. I'm crafts that hell now. <laughs> I'm a boy. <laughs> I'm so, a boy. You craft that page. Right? I know. Like so, as a fashion designer that I am, I even though I'm looking up to people like Vicky James and Prudence and mm-hmm. all that, um, I actually want to empower myself and empower people. Yeah. Yeah. Like I have this flair for children, female Wonderful. children. Don't be offended, child. Yeah, it's fine, well, I know it's guys can learn fashion design, <laughs> but I don't know. I'm just attracted to the female yeah. um, gender. So I just feel like I want to empower myself. When I get g- more grounded, mm. I can like open a little fashion, okay, not little, a fashion academy. You know, which, that's one thing I like about the fashion industry. The, yeah. the, the attention to apprenticeship yeah. is yes. very high and very strong. Like yeah. they're very open to receiving people and yeah. building them up until they become established. Of course. So the, the the spirit of apprenticeship is there. Mm-hmm. People come in to learn from me yeah. and of course start their own business and mm. that's, that's how we get that, that, the that's actually place. wonderful. Five mm-hmm. years from now we'll be mentioning her name in all these our conversations. Abiel. Thank you so yeah. much. I, I, I guess for me, right, one of the things I feel like is my greatest power, right, is my mm. voice. Mm. And mm. trust me that and I love, I'm so passionate so much about education. Mm. I do so much. And you want to change the curriculum? I want to change a lot of things about <laughs> I do a lot of things about education. And mm. I feel like it's just a step mm. after the other. And I'm actually still on that part. Mm. And another thing again is that I'm a very vocal person. Wherever I go, if I see something that is not right, I will say something. Mm. I don't, if that, even with my friends, right? If we're just just you know, playing around somewhere and then someone drops something on the floor, I'm like, hey, pick that, that, that thing mm. up. Mm. Yesterday, I, I was to withdraw money from the purest lady and then she dropped a line, a line on pure water on the floor. I'm like, yeah, pick it up. And she, she, she does, she does, she does, she does, she does, she does, does been around. Just, just pick it. It doesn't take drop. that much. You know, sometimes when I go out, maybe I'm done eating biscuits or something, and I put, put it, it in back my pocket. In your yeah, pocket. there's no trust. They'll be looking at me. Man, you be putting it. Like, there's no. What do you want me to do? Throw it on the floor? Like, you know. Sometimes when I get to him, right, <laughs> you see me because I would usually neatly <laughs> fold it and, and put it in my pocket. pocket. I said something very important. <laughs> sometimes I'm like, I was in my pocket. <laughs> You'll be it's open this morning. That's you get. <laughs> I just have to go and throw it somewhere. I guess that's what we can take today. Yeah. yeah. It's important for you as well to ensure that you're building your nature. I think your nature. It's important for you as well to ensure that you're building your nation one way or the other. Yeah. Your way might be little for now, but mm. trust me, it goes a long little way. drops of water Make makes a mighty ocean. ocean. That's all we're taught. And don't forget that tomorrow is near. Bye for now. Bye. Bye, guys.